Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Dome, uh, and proud to be here as a representative of the Arthroscopy Association of North America, and thanking all of you for welcoming me to this meeting. Uh, in this lecture, I'll speak on the arthroscopic treatment of hip impingement. My disclosures are listed with the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. In launching into this topic on hip impingement, I'd like to share with you a little bit of background about the American Hip Institute and the American Hip Institute Research Foundation. Uh, the mission statement of the American Hip Institute Research Foundation is to alleviate human suffering by revolutionizing the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of joint pain, leading the field of hip surgery and joint preservation forward through innovation, research, and education. Our program areas include outcome-based orthopedic research, education and fellowship programs, strategic partnerships, and innovation and awareness. And our areas of innovation include hip arthroscopy, including labral repair, augmentation and reconstruction, capsular management, gluteus medius repair, and hip replacement using technologies such as robotic arm assistance, as well as Birmingham hip resurfacing. Some of our recent publications can be seen here, and uh, our publications are a way for us to disseminate information uh, through the orthopedic community worldwide. Our educational efforts uh, center around our fellowship program. We've uh, uh, trained uh, over 20 fellows, and some of them can be seen here at the Orthopedic Learning Center, uh, teaching other, uh, other surgeons. Uh, our internship program uh, for future uh, doctors, our surgical and clinical observation programs through which we would welcome uh, any surgeons from uh, the Saudi Orthopedic Association to visit us, uh, and um, the uh, web presence through AmericanHipInstitute.com and AHIRF, the Research Foundation.org. So a little by the numbers, the Research Foundation to date uh, has published over 350 research publications in high impact academic journals on the topic of hip preservation. Uh, the clinical research data collected so far has been on over 10,000 patients uh, in our registry. Um, we have uh, four fellowship and uh, over eight internship opportunities annually and over 90% of our funding is allocated directly to program services. Uh, the American Hip Institute as a clinical entity exists uh, to be a uh, global leader in hip care and to provide very high level care for uh, the most difficult of hip surgeries and the most difficult of uh, hip pathologies, both in hip preservation and in arthroplasty. Uh, myself and the team at American Hip Institute have had the honor of working with a variety of professional sports teams here in the United States, uh, including the Chicago Sky and the Los Angeles Lakers. We've also had the opportunity to serve as a destination uh, for second opinions for uh, athletes from a variety of sports, most notably from the National Football League or NFL and the NBA, through which a number of uh, athletes um, have uh, been treated successfully with arthroscopic hip surgeries. All of this can't be possible without a tremendous team, and our team uh, includes uh, a number of expert clinicians, uh, as well as, as a very high uh, level uh, research team uh, and clinical staff, all of which uh, make possible both the research and educational efforts, as well as the clinical efforts in caring for uh, patients with very difficult hip problems. So on to impingement. Uh, my favorite Michelangelo quote, in fact, my only Michelangelo quote, uh, is on surgical sculpture. I saw an angel trapped in a block of stone, so I chiseled until I set the angel free. I suppose that wasn't on surgical sculpture, it was just on sculpture, but I feel it applies to what we do in cam management, which is not at all a basic technique. Uh, it is a, a very sophisticated surgical sculpture and it is fraught with uh, pitfalls. Uh, if uh, we are off at all, uh, we can cause more harm than good, which uh, of course we've all taken a Hippocratic oath to uh, first do no harm. So we must approach CAM management with a great degree of care. The goal in CAM management is to achieve a perfectly spherical femoral head. <clears throat> when we do this through an open procedure, we can use a spherical template like the one seen in these pictures to achieve this goal of sphericity. 
But when we do this arthroscopically, we're only seeing a small part of the femoral head. And uh, hence, our visualization is limited. And our three-dimensional assessment is limited. This is somewhat like standing on the beach and looking at the horizon. You can't really appreciate that the Earth is round when all you see is the horizon because it's only a small part of the globe. And that's very comparable to the arthroscopic view where we're only seeing a small part of the globe of the femoral head. In contrast with fluoroscopy, we have a view of the entire globe of the femoral head, much like if we're standing on the moon looking at the earth and we can see the entire circle of the earth. Uh, so here we can see what would be round and we can see what is not round and hence what we want to remove to leave a perfectly spherical femoral head, like setting the angel free. But fluoroscopy is a two-dimensional perspective of a three-dimensional shape. So we need fluoroscopy from many different angles in order to use fluoro to assess our 3D shape. As a little bit of background, we know that the labrum is very important in sealing the ball in the socket and sealing the lubricant fluid in the joint. And by doing so, it provides chondroprotective fluid dynamics. Under resection of a cam morphology may result in residual femoroacetabular impingement. And that's not ideal, but over resection may be worse because it may disrupt the labral seal, as you see in the pictures on the right here, where the femoral neck enters the joint and is not in contact with the labrum. Let's explore that a little bit further. Uh, here are some examples of what we aim for in surgical sculpture, the perfectly spherical femoroplasty. So at the top, you see three examples of cam lesions. And at the bottom, you see each of them after their corresponding femoroplasties. So if you look, here is one type of cam lesion on the left, and here's a post-op uh, fluoroscopy view after femoroplasty making it round. Here's a different morphology where it's more of a flattening of the femoral neck in the center and afterward, again, perfectly round. And then here is quite a severe cam morphology with a, a, a post-slipped uh, capital femoral epiphysis uh, case. And again, afterward, perfectly round. This is what we're aiming for is a perfect sphere. So if we do not achieve the perfect sphere and we under resect, that's not ideal because we may leave impingement. And this is how cam impingement works. The part of the femoral head that is out of round enters the socket and disrupts the chondrolabral uh, junction. Uh, however, if we over resect, that may in fact be worse because we break the labral seal. Let's have a look at how that happens. Here's an example of an over resection. And when this over resection enters the joint, when the patient sits down, look what happens. The labrum is no longer in contact with the femoral neck and that breaks the seal. So if we break the seal, then we do not have the chondroprotective fluid film in the joint and we do not have the stability that the labrum confers. And a patient like this may feel locking or catching or pain every time they sit and stand or bend their uh, hip and go from a flex to an extended position. Here again is this breaking of the seal. Here's a live example of this where you'll actually see the hip sublux following an over-resected femoroplasty. So the labrum's good. It's got a good seal against the femoral head on the articular cartilage. But when you flex the hip, watch what happens. Poof. There the seal is broken. You saw the egress of fluid. And suddenly you see the hip actually sublux as the seal is broken. So this happens in uh, real life uh, when that seal is broken, uh, we um, disrupt the mechanics of the hip joint entirely through the over resection. So it's with this in mind that we published the uh, article in the American Journal of Sports Medicine entitled In Search of the Spherical Femoroplasty. CAM over resection leads to inferior functional scores before and after revision hip arthroscopic surgery. So we've proven in this study that the worst of all worlds is actually over resection. And while under resection isn't optimal, over resection is probably worse. Uh, so we must be conservative in our CAM resections. We must also consider the unique demands of the individual athlete that we're treating. Here are four athletes who have been treated at the American Hip Institute. Uh, a male NBA player, a male NFL player, a female uh, professional basketball player, an Olympian, uh, and a mixed martial arts fighter. Uh, these four athletes 
all have very different demands on their hips and we must treat them accordingly with a different approach to accommodate the sport that they do as well as their own body type. Um, so in conclusion, we should aim for a perfect sphere. This is a technically challenging procedure, but can be accomplished with meticulous technique. We must use all our tools, including preoperative planning, intraoperative multidimensional fluoroscopy. And in the future, we aim to incorporate robotics, navigation, and virtual reality to make this procedure not only more reproducible, but more accessible to more surgeons and more patients. Here is our end goal, the perfect sphere, like looking at the earth from standing on the moon. Thank you very much.